Hello, I'm in my backyard today and I'm going to demonstrate how I use a bucket auger for archaeology. This is an AMS auger kit. This particular kit comes in a nice vinyl pack, pack here that you can really fold up and throw in your car or truck and get out to the field. It comes with a standard three and a quarter inch auger for soil and uh, an open bucket for uh, wet, mucky soils. It also has four drill stems that you can stack together to uh, make it longer as you go deeper. And basically you disassemble it by screwing it together. It's a pretty straightforward operation. These kits are a little bit pricey. Uh, they can be purchased on forestry suppliers and other other places on the internet. I think this kit cost around $600 when I purchased it. Purchased it. That's been several years ago. So you do want to take care of it. Occasionally put a little bit of oil on the threads. They also make a, uh, a version that has quick couplers that are much easier to assemble and disassemble. That's the basic uh, auger. Well, it's the middle of January, and for some reason it's 50 degrees in western Pennsylvania, which is very unusual, so I thought it'd be a good day to go out and do something outside. So today, I uh, put together the hand auger. Uh, I set up my solo screen. This is uh, solo screen is made by Focus Design. I've had several of these for a uh, number of years, and I really like them. I have my... One cell soil color book uh, with the different kind of like paint chips that, that you can identify the color of the soils. I have my centimeter tape, just has centimeters, no inches. You can buy these in, at for forestry supply. And I have my field book, a right and a range field book that I use for archaeology and soil projects. So, what I do on my screen here, I take a small piece of uh, black plastic and I lay it out on the screen and it covers about half the screen. Put something on it so the wind doesn't blow it away. And then I have a blue tarp underneath the screen to catch the soil so we can put it back into the hole. And basically we select the place we're going to drill our hole and just slowly twist the bucket into the ground. Hopefully we don't hit too many rocks. Once the bucket's filled, we lift it back out. And I made this, I have this hand scoop. I squished it so it would fit in between here and I welded a little latch on the back. So we can turn this up and it stays in. And this is really the secret that makes the bucket auger work well. So once you have that locked in there, I can turn this upside down and tap the handle. The scoop becomes very important once you have a really deep hole and your, your stems, so you have th two or three of these stems making the auger very long because then your auger is up in the air whenever you're pounding it on the T-handle. Here's where the screen table comes in. I take my soil scoop and I lay my soil out onto the black plastic. Now I can see what the soil looks like, what kind of rocks are in it, maybe even some artifacts. Then we simply Take some measurements. We want to know how deep our first, 
first bucket went. So it looks like 10 centimeters. And I am going to write that in my book. Zero to 10. This is a uh, dark topsoil, A horizon soil. So I'm gonna have A horizon. And it looks like a silt bottom. Then I would take my soil killer book. I know our soils are, there's different pages in the book going from red in the more red in the front to more yellow in the back. Most of our soils in this part of Pennsylvania fall on this 10YR page. And I just take my soil and compare it to the chips. And this is pretty dark. I would say, and then a number, 10YR is a page, then two is the row, and then there's numbers for the columns below. So this is a 10YR two slash two. And that corresponds to very dark brown. So 10YR two slash two. So anybody, any other archaeologists or soil scientists can go to a Munsell book when they read the report and they can look that soil keller up and they know exactly what the keller of the soil was. So I will go down and take a second bucket full out and it seems like I'm hitting a large rock. So we may not be able to go any further on this hole. Again, put my scoop in here, tap it out, and then I lay my soil out next to the first one so I can compare the two. And it looks pretty much like the same soil. So I can just write, I'll measure my depth. That takes me down to 15 centimeters. So 10 to 15, and I was just going to write same as above. Because there's no significant change in the texture or the quality of the soil. Now, once I'm done with the hole, I can move my equipment aside. And here's the advantage of the screen. I can then take the soil and swipe it to the bottom of the screen, off the edge of the plastic, and quickly, quickly sort through the soil and see what kind of rocks and if there's any artifacts there, we'll recover those as well. And that's kind of important when you're examining the soils. Uh, the artifacts give you an idea of the age and what, if there's an archaeological site present, you might have some clues to the actual site. And here I just found a little wire nut. seems to be all there is, just a wire nut. And I'll write that down in my field book here. And then I also record notes of where my arbor holes are located on the project area. Uh, um, I will usually GPS the location of the auger hole and then sometimes if we're doing a river, if we're doing, looking at soils in different river terraces, we'll use a total station and we'll get a really accurate location of the auger holes so we can compare the relative depths, depths of each auger hole in the soil layers. And it's a way of correlating soil layers across the project area. So the bucket auger is a useful tool for archaeologists, especially in river soils. It allows us to see how deep the soils are and it gives us an idea of how deep we need to dig for artifacts. Well, this concludes my bucket auger demonstration for today. And as always, dig deeper. <laughs>